Hi, my name is Jennifer Thompson. I'm with the University of Wyoming Cooperative Extension Service, and we're here today to talk about living off the grid. And today with me is Bob McGovern. He's our expert, and he's been living off the grid for over five years now, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about solar and wind. But first, what is living off the grid? Living off the grid is a lot of things to different people. For some, it's a, a fairly primitive return to nature um, with no modern conveniences at all. We're the other side of that. We're trying to run what amounts to a modern house with all of the conveniences, uh, computers, refrigeration, the, the works. Um, we're just not connected to the power lines in any way. Um, when I built out here, they were about a mile away from the house and it just wasn't practical to run them. So we decided to look into ways of making and storing our own electricity. Um, and it's worked out pretty well. So you run not only um, your house, but you're a carpenter by trade and you run your shop as well. Yep, we run a full-time 60 hour a week cabinet shop off the same batteries that the house runs on. Uh, and your, your system is mainly consists of wind and solar? We have a small wind turbine and eight solar panels and some very large batteries. Um, a, a lot of surrounding equipment goes with that as well, but that's the, that's the basis of the system. And uh, it seems to be sized pretty well for our needs and our consumption, maybe even a little bigger than we need. Mm -hmm. um, what was kind of the decision process you went through when you're thinking about moving out here and you're pretty far away from the grid system? What was kind of the main things that we went through in mind when you're thinking about whether you wanted to go off grid and that helped you make that decision whether to do it or not? It's really pretty out here. <laughs> uh, I like looking at the mountains um, off the porch and it was a beautiful piece of land that was available quite inexpensively because there were no utilities mm -hmm. to the property. Um, that's one thing for people to consider is that you can get a nice sized chunk of land much cheaper if the power lines aren't already to the edge of the property. Yeah. Um, it suited me philosophically. I'm sort of a, an independent, crusty person who doesn't like paying electric bills every month. Mm -hmm. um, but above all, it just made practical sense. We knew that we didn't use that much power to start with, mm -hmm. um, which is a crucial qualifier. And it was a neat way to not make a point, but to just see if it could be done. Um, and as, as it happens, yes, it can <laughs> without too much difficulty. Um, but those criteria are, uh, are pretty basic. If you decide that living off the grid is something you're interested in, you need to be somewhat handy and mm -hmm. self-reliant. Um, it only makes practical sense if the power lines are quite some distance away. And um, you need to not use much power to begin with. Um, if you qualify for those, then it's a perfectly rational decision, not just an emotional one. Mm -hmm. I presume you had to do quite, or you did quite a bit of research before you Ooh. kind of jumped into it, or did you I just I was starting cold. Were? I knew nothing <laughs> about this. Um, so between the seeing the land for sale and buying it, I spent quite a bit of time with my friend Google mm -hmm. um, <laughs> researching how practical the idea really was. Um, you don't want to paint yourself into a corner or res regret the decisions you made later. Um, but it didn't take too much work to get the sense that other people are doing this and that it's working for them and that uh, Wyoming is a really great place to do it with all of our sun and wind. It's, uh, this is about prime territory if you're interested in living off the grid. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, we do have a lot of solar uh, you don't, it's something you may not originally think about when you 300 think about 300 to 320 yeah. days yeah. of bright sunshine a year. Um, there's only about one month total of the year when we don't have sun. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, that happens to be January. Um, but generally, yeah, you can count on the sun. So it sounds like a lot of your decisions, you know, when you're looking into it, a lot of it was practically oriented and had some of it had to do with the economics as far as being so far away from the, the grid and then your power consumption. So how did you go through those calculations kind of to figure out the economics? Um, first of all, we had a bid from the power company. How, this is a good idea if you're looking at a piece of land, how much money is it gonna cost to extend the power lines, run them to your property, and put a $3,000 transformer outside your house? That gives you a baseline to work against. 
And the answer was between twenty-three dollars and $25,000 to get the power out to this parcel of land. Well, as I started doing research, I realized that we could go off grid for mm, probably between sixteen dollars and $20,000. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a pragmatic decision, is that you're taking your savings up front and you're not counting on competing with um, cheap electricity from the utility to make your savings, because you're never going to beat the utility for providing electricity. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can take your savings up front, then why not do it? Um, so, and then the other thing to do is get out your electric bills. I was going to say, you must have taken a look at how much power yeah. you're consuming to be um, I had a bill from the house and a bill from the shop, and together they were about 9 kilowatt hours per day. Mm -hmm. Now, to put that in some sort of perspective, the median American household uses 32 kilowatt hours per day mm -hmm. just for the house. Um, not many off-grid systems are going to supply that amount of power. Mm -hmm. You couldn't find batteries big enough. You need your entire roof color covered with $60,000 in solar panels. So when I looked and saw house and shop, not terribly efficient. I was living in apartments with bad refrigerators and, you know, incandescent lighting. So I figured, okay, we're at nine. We might get it down to six, but let's plan for nine. Mm -hmm. um, and then started pricing out what a nine kilowatt hour per day system would cost. Um, yeah, I figured out that we were going to be saving between eight and ten thousand dollars up front, and that's about where we came in. Mm -hmm. um, as it turns out, even though we planned for optimistically six kilowatt hours per day, this house and the woodworking shop together use only 4.5, steady, wow. year-round, 4.5 kilowatt hours per day, mm -hmm. or one-seventh the average American household consumption. And I presume a lot of that has to do with the way that you've designed your house and shop to take um, advantage of That's passes. That's an excellent Thanks. point. Um, when you start designing this, the key is to try and integrate everything. Space heating, water handling, waste handling, where are you getting your drinking water from? How are you irrigating your landscaping? Um, low flow shower heads and toilets. Um, what's your stove run on? Get an efficient refrigerator. Every, how is your lighting? Do you use day lighting? Like this house, we rarely turn on lights before you know, the sun is fully set because there's enough ambient light that we don't need to. Mm -hmm. All of these things mesh together to create a house that is efficient on every level. And once you've made your house design efficient, which way do you orient your house? Do you point it towards the sun? Do you point it so that it blocks the wind, the prevailing winter winds? Um, do you make maximum use of available light with windows or skylights or those solar tubes, which are great? Um, if you do all of this, you may find that suddenly that 30 kilowatt hours a day you're using is down around 7 or 8. And that makes it perfectly feasible to put in an off-grid electric system. Mm -hmm. You mentioned solar tubes. Are those your water heating? No, those are just the uh, uh, solar tubular oh, skylights, okay. which mm -hmm. pro provide tremendous amounts of light without uh, heat escaping from your house. Uh, mm -hmm. um, because every inefficiency that's part of your house, you have to make up for somehow by throwing BTUs or watts at. Mm -hmm. um, if your insulation isn't very good, your furnace has to run more, and that uses electricity. Um, but if you go at every aspect of your house to make it as efficient as possible, then you don't need much power to start with, and it's much easier to supply a small need power system than it is to supply a large one.